We all have the same issues. We have so much on our plate that we're forced to juggle our responsibilities. In fact, we pride ourselves at being able to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and getting it all done by the timeline. Well, my friend, I'm here to tell you, that's called multitasking, and it's the devil. What's the big deal? Tune in. You'll find out. Hello, and welcome back to Hidden Parts, the podcast. My name is Sean Monet, your host, and today we are going to have a very special conversation with our guest, Brandon Logan. Brandon is a licensed behavioral analyst. Hi, Brandon. Hi, hi. Thank you for having me on. Oh, I'm just thankful to have that you've ex- you accepted my mm-hmm. invitation to come. Of course, of course. And I'm very excited to, um, to come on this podcast just to talk about a behavior analyst or just the mind multitasking of course um but i like to talk about the mind all day so yeah Yeah, so let's get into your mind tell us about yourself okay um so right now currently i work as a licensed behavior analyst so primarily with children or teens with autism um or on the spectrum um on some capacity building programs and sequences either for them in the tailored way or for their families and then teaching them how to you know implement those strategies to change the environment or whatever we need to um but what got me into this which i have a very different experience as a behavior analyst than most because of the fact that i now am applying this outside of the traditional aba autism field um, but what started that, when I was in my grad program, I was blessed with an opportunity to work with my supervisor who had experience applying ABA outside of autism. And she did multiple research projects, um, applying it to hockey and dance and applying the science of changing behavior to sports. So she, that allowed me an opportunity to learn from her to figure out how I can apply it with a local high school football team. And from there, I was invited to speak to uh, this international ABAI conference, um, which was, it was, it was nerve wracking at first practicing (laughs) for it because it was, I was supposed to be speaking in front of like hundreds of people and COVID happened. So it was virtual, which helped a lot, but it was still like, it was still a little, very, very nerve-wracking. Uh, yeah, it would have been nerve-wracking oh for me God. either way. Uh, but from there, I was asked to speak at Old Dominion University to talk about how I can, or how all now new um, licensed behavior analysts can apply ABA, which is Applied Behavior Analysis outside of the field of autism and how we can apply it throughout the world. So I talked about sustainability, I talked about mental health and bullying inside of schools. Um, Of course, I had to talk about sports. (laughs) Um, So I talked about all these different ways that the science of behavior can be used to make the world better. That, of course, over time made me think like, wow, how can I do this now? So I began to partner with practitioners and subject matter experts to create courses and programs for 
I bring in the sequence and meet people where they are, mm -hmm. the tailored, individualized aspect. And we might bring in their information just to like tailor it to everybody where they're at, you know? That's uh, awesome. That yeah. is awesome. And that is what intrigues me so much about you. And speaking of the science of behavior, mm -hmm. that leads us to the title of this episode, yeah. which is Jack of All Trades, Master of None. We want to talk about multitasking. Mm -hmm. Multitasking is the devil. Mm -hmm. And today we're going to just kind of have a stimulating conversation just to say, you know, we do it. We all do it. But there's a difference. Um, there's a busy life and then there's a living life. And we just want to make sure that we set those boundaries. So... You want to talk to me about multitasking, yeah. Brandon? Oh my gosh, yeah, I think we kind of hear from teachers or gurus out here now that we should be learning better ways to figure out new ways or better ways to multitask, you know? Um, Is there more ways? <laughs> no, no. Um, it's It's humanly impossible for our brain to multitask where like literally the term multitasking came from I think it was the 80s or the 70s where the com it was used to help describe the computer with multitasking multiple tabs at once and how much power it took to do so our brains yes we're gonna talk about our brains as if it were a supercomputer but as it relates to like the neurobiological data loss that comes from multitasking, it's really like, is it worth it if we really want what we want, you know? So. Okay, so let's break this down to okay. plain English. Okay. It's not talking about some neuro <laughs> this and neuro that. Oh, uh, so <laughs> let's back it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So today we're walking around and we're juggling um, responsibilities and mm -hmm. doing them well so that we think but so anyway we think. we're that by doing that we're treating our brain as a computer right when it is so right. not right and it can't be programmed no well it can be programmed but if we're multitasking then we're trying to program it by doing multiple things at once and then the energy that we are using to do all these things at one time is isn't being effectively spent because of the fact that in order for our attention to be here, then if our attention isn't here, then this thing isn't getting life anymore. It's not getting attention. So as soon as we take it from here to here, if we didn't finish this, then we're multi it's working on multiple projects. These things are just getting like fraction, like fractionalized attention, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, and we unfortunately do do this throughout life all the time. Um, is it effective? I don't think so, but let's just kind of, um, give a real live example of multitasking. For mm -hmm. me, if I'm doing a load of laundry, right, and while, you know, I'm waiting for the cycle to end and put the load in the dryer, I'm going to do something else. Right. Whether that be wash the dishes or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. That can be a version of multitasking, but in my opinion, it's a, a healthy version yes. Yes. of multitasking. Can you give me an example of something or, well, yeah, something that we all do mm -hmm. that's an example of some uh, unhealthy behavior? Absolutely. Absolutely. So when we are in conversation... So, yeah, no, we're talking about, like, texting and listening to somebody. If I'm listening but texting or reading an email, then one of these tasks has to get 50% or 25% while the other gets 75%. But at the end of the day, neither of them are getting 100% of my full presence. And if neither get my 100% of my full presence, I can't, like, fully immerse with this, you know, because um, presence is a present. Right. You know? It is truly a gift. It's a gift. And uh, I think as a people, we don't realize that. Yeah. Or we realize it, but we take it for granted, like some of yeah. the other things that we do. Yeah. Um, but small shift, mm -hmm. what you said to me resonated because 
every we have relationships mm -hmm. you know you and i have a relationship you know we have relationships with our loved ones and whoever co-workers whoever right so how fair is that to mm. the individual yeah and how fair yeah. is that if you spin it right if yeah. you if i'm coming to you brandon with some real deep stuff on my heart and i want to yeah. talk to you about it because i revere you as my yeah. friend yeah. and you're giving me half, half ass stuff mm -hmm. so it's, it's does not... that speak to the quality of mm -hmm. that that of, you, of your present mm -hmm. yes no absolutely absolutely it's it is very difficult to and let's we're gonna break down like presence is a present, right? Mm -hmm. Like it within the present moment, there are so many different opportunities to learn and grow and you know acquire new skill sets or perspectives. And if I'm fifty percent present, then I'm acquiring fifty percent of the available blessings available for me at any point in time. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's applies to me and to you, you know, whoever you were interacting with, because you can only give 50% of your attention, your presence, your, you know, just 50% of you if you're here while you're trying to be here at the same time, you know. Yeah, that's really deep. So that's why I say multitasking is the devil. <laughs> and again, you know, that saying, jack of all trades, master of many well it's master of one because your your presence is the present mm -hmm. and it's a gift that you're giving to whoever that's in your space at the time right oh absolutely okay. absolutely absolutely it's definitely a gift to to receive and to give but being present you know so let's get into the brain mm -hmm. i want to talk about the brain okay. a little bit okay we talked about it like us treating it like a computer mm -hmm. so not mm -hmm. it is not a computer um, we I, I do like to think about it in metaphor like it's a computer but it's not a computer you, and just we plug it up and it recharges with electricity how however long we want to use it that is not what our brain is <laughs> our brain is it, it has a limited amount of willpower per day Mm. Like it has a limited amount of focused attention it can use per day. And if we know that, like that we have uh, essentially a formula of willpower or of attention or of discipline that we can exercise per day, I think we'd be a little more intentional about how we use it, you know. Um, so given that it's a computer, in a sense, it's not a computer in terms of its... Our brain is going to burn out if we plug it in and we use it. We think we use our brain like we plug a computer in for hours and we just type on it. Or be on a game for hours. If we do that with our brain, we'll have burnout. We have stress. We have anxiety. So if we think about this in the essence of a computer, if we have multiple tabs open all day, every day, and this half attention here and a quarter of attention here and... 10% there and 13% here and these are all things that are just constantly just on my brain my spotlight my one spotlight mm -hmm. my one spotlight is constantly scanning all day every day and by the end time I get home I'm tired I'm, I don't have no energy to for me or for my partner or for whatever it is you know because at the when you get home after multitasking all day um. So yes, you you are truly depleted when mm -hmm. you when you get home or to to your final destination or really? you know some people even have part time jobs. So can you imagine on your day job whatever that might be, um, you're multitasking at work all day, all day long, all day. and then because of economy you happen to have to have a part time job. You have to go there and be expected to produce. Mm -hmm. So even if you don't have a part-time job, what I like to say is when I get off of work and go home, that's really my real job. Mm. That's how I look at mm. it, right? And it's unfortunate mm. because we're at work longer and, mm -hmm. and we spend more time mm -hmm. at work than we, we do like that. at home. Lot, but actually. that is your real job. But by the time I get there, I'm just like, 
Yeah. No, no, don't get me wrong. Sometimes, sometimes the day is just, you know, mm -hmm. so much in the day. Um, but that applies at work too. That applies at home. That applies for ourselves with self care. Or, you know, how can we be present within our self care? Or how can we be present within a meeting at work? Or with our family, you know, if we're always thinking about all these things that we have to do, or always trying to do multiple things at one time, then the gift of presence is is depleted. You know? Yeah, and I'll take it one more okay. step, right? Oftentimes, it's training. People listen to respond. Mm -hmm. So sometimes in all Absolutely. of that, they're listening to respond, but also you're talking and then I'm thinking, oh, did I cut the iron off? Mm -hmm. Or, mm -hmm. you know, I meant to yeah. pull that chicken out to defraud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is like some crazy conditioning that mm -hmm. we programmed in our brain. Mm -hmm. um, the multitasking uh, download. Mm -hmm. So we do it constantly, mm -hmm. but how can we back out of it? Mm, that's a really, 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 really good question. Um, one thing I like to do when I want to like practice presence, if you will, mm -hmm. is like being very aware of all the things in my environment. So like if I'm like in this space, just looking at everything here, like hearing everything that I'm hearing, feeling everything I'm feeling, and that way I can kind of like stamp myself into this present moment. Um, I'm not going to lie, after 7 o'clock, 6, 7 o'clock during the week, or after 7, 8 o'clock, my phone is on Do Not Disturb. Because now it, it's my time that I have to like recharge or maybe set the tone for the next and day. And you or, owe that to yourself. Yeah. I Like all of my notifications. Period. All day long. <laughs> all day. Uh, all off. Do stuff. <laughs> They're off because I'm getting up there in the age. I just had a birthday on Wednesday. Happy birthday. Ooh, thank you. <laughs> but listen, I'll go upstairs and I'm forgetting what I went up there for. So the any distraction at all this point is just going to mess me up. Yeah. All the time. So I don't have them on. Mm -hmm. Unless it's, you know, I say... You know, on a Saturday from 10 to mm -hmm. about 6, I'll leave the notifications on. Mm -hmm. But if I'm spending time with my family or yeah. if I'm doing something for no, me, I have to. all of them have to be I off. To. Because I'm so dutiful and loyal mm -hmm. that I'm going like, oh. oh That's a good point. That's you know, you texted point. me and um, let me just see what she wants. Yeah. Or, you know, let me just. Because I accept, you know that my mission here on earth is to serve. Mm. But in order to serve, one, I have to serve me first right. because if my right. cup is empty... Then you can't pour. Yeah, right. Yeah. So if I leave those notifications on, my heart wants to help everyone. Mm -hmm. So to counter that, cut them off. And if it's an emergency, people know it's how to get... a lot of self-awareness, you know? It is. They have that self-awareness that like, hey... I have a big heart, and if I know that, uh, since I know that about myself, when I'm doing things for me, I have to turn my phone on to not disturb, or I have to not be as available mm -hmm. to everybody, because otherwise this won't get done, and I won't be happy, or whatever it is, you know. Yeah, or if it's, it's going to be half done. Yeah. And, and that yeah. speaks to you, you yeah. the quality of you. Mm -hmm. I like that example a lot. Um Another thing that we can do to help with that, I guess, desire to want to do things all the time or, 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 like you said, be always available to every request mm -hmm. or task is create a list. Like, I love a good list. Oh, I man. love a good list. Like, I, I add the, at the, Middle of the day or the end of the day, I love crossing my stuff off the list. <laughs> like it feels so good to either check it or cross it off because of the fact that after you create a list on Sunday for the week, or if it's just for Monday, like split your work stuff and split your stuff. Even if you get sixty percent of it done, let's say you only get seventy five percent, that's fine. You got seventy five percent of t all that, all these tasks done. You can move the next the next day, you mm -hmm. know? And then looking at that at the end of the day, it's like, hmm, 
I was successful today. Like I did 75% of the things that I set off to do. And sometimes you get 100. Sometimes you get 50, you know, but, you know, the, the days fluctuate. Right. But, right. Yeah, and that's no, self-gratification. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I journal. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that's really important to me is to write down everything I'm grateful for, mm, to write like down things that concern yeah. me, things I'm struggling with that day mm -hmm. or whatever. So a year, two years down the road, once, you know, because I re just recycle my books, mm. I put them up and mm -hmm. I revisit them mm -hmm. and I could look and say, hey, you know, on this date, this year, I was dealing with this. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now look. Now look at what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. so self gratification yeah, is a big no, one. It's it very big. big. Mm -hmm. It's very big. And then also with the list, let's say if you want to have a micro list for the day or for what you know for the week, I like to sometimes like zoom out and then make it like a macro list. Um, so whether that's for a month, whether that's for a quarter. Oh, you are super organized, Mister Brandon. For, Talk about behavior. Well, oh my god. Whether that's for hey, five months from now, fifteen years from now, what would I would like that to look like? And then, if I can like envision that in the future, I can reverse engineer it going backwards. Y'all help me. I ain't there yet. I ain't there yet. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> Help me! I need an appointment. No, okay, no, we can, we can figure it out. We can figure it out. It's um, it is a beautiful process to push yourself, and that comes with the gift of presence. You can't do that. You can't like envision outward to us to something that doesn't exist yet for you, and then plan towards it if you can't be present in the moment. You know, that's like, real. You can't creatively can't creatively think about something that doesn't exist for you. And, and then go for it. To That's it. real. And Without to presence. be honest, there are people that just live their lives day to day to day to day. And yeah. and they don't have a plan. Yeah. Not to say, you know, I'm judging or no, anything's no, wrong with that. All. But, you know, that that is a thing. Not at all. And, it's, and, it, and even though, like, I know if we all ask each one of us, we would probably say, like, yeah, I would like a plan. Right? And if, and if we don't have one towards one thing or... These other things that's find this awareness through presence. Now you know you don't, and you can make a plan for it. You know, make a plan to have a plan. <laughs> we can have a meeting to plan a for the plan. plan that yeah. we want. <laughs> <laughs> Figure it out. Like, yes. But it's all one step at a time. One step at a time. You know. Right. Sometimes we get caught up in the mind and how things should be, and get attached to like what we think the end result should be, and all these should be yeah and i don't want to preach doom and gloom but mm -hmm. you know because our brain is not a computer mm -hmm. you know overload for a human mm -hmm. being mm -hmm. is serious very serious it is serious it's not like oh very gotta call Dell, gotta send the computer for mm -mm. rebuild you know mm -mm. for a human being the damage is sometimes irreversible you know when you're constantly running on 100 Mm -hmm. You know, what is that doing to your heart? You know, because of the stress. Mm -hmm. And if you're running at 100, you're surely not eating right. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to talk about any of those things? Oh my gosh, that was that's a very good point. That's a very good point. With the, if We're thinking about our body and the essence that this has a limited amount of energy that it can expand per day. And if we are using... A, a, a standard amount of brain power but if we're multitasking now we have to use more energy to do the same thing somebody who wouldn't be multitasking would be doing so in that instance it has to now take away energy from the heart or from the liver or from the gallbladder or from the digestion tract or from the respiratory tract so that way it can complete these tasks that the user is asking it to do you know um, and then, if we want to break down why that's not good at all, long term for the human body, stress is anything, stress puts the body at dis-ease, where it's, at, it's in dysfunction, it's disorganized, it's not, it's, dis, it's not in balance. And once stress goes into effect on the body, it starts to take away vitality or life force, or just, the more we stress, the 
more we are willingly putting our body under shortened lifespan because it's taking away our vitality. Mm. You know? So multitasking is like willing willing stress. Which things certain things we can't control. Multitasking is one of those things, you know. And that's why I call it the devil. Yeah. It's one real y'all. So what you got next? Mm. You know, what you working on? Tell oh, me more about oh, what, man, what's man, in the future man. since you it's a big old plan. What are you seeing in the future for you, Brandon? Uh, so as we talked about, I'm a licensed behavior analyst. Mm -hmm. um, and right now, ABA, which is Applied Behavior Analysis, is primarily used with autism and paid for within insurance for autism. Um, but I'm definitely a trailblazer, so I'm trailblazing a, a new way for that. And I, what I have been doing for the past few years, I've been working with a nonprofit to help them with sports. It's called Aminga, if you guys want to support. Um, but it's an international nonprofit where we are working with local teenagers in Africa, where we are, I am bringing in the ABA piece for hyper focused behaviors within sports in the classrooms. Um, after now, I am working with some other subject matter experts to create courses and programs with their expertise. One of them is called a course called Mindful Fit, and it is with Beta Beta Health, and we are bringing my expertise of creating tailored individualized packages with Beta Health's information and expertise with weight management. So teaching people how to literally understand and go through the process and maintain after the course wow that's so that sounds very yeah, interesting no, and then there's some more things coming so it's how could we so you said amiga aminga aminga um, it's spelled a-m-i-n-g-a um aminga youth sports development camp okay and we could google it or is there mm -hmm. a website or? yep they have a website and you can donate how much you know you want to Aminga and that goes all of the proceeds go to the nonprofit and the camp. Um, and if you are interested in Beta Health, it is B E T A Health. Um, and that clinic is in Owings Mills, and we have, of course, some programs available for anybody who's interested. All right, all right. <laughs> I'm okay. very, very, very excited. Thank you. So, Brandon, oftentimes when I wrap up an episode, I like to to leave. The listeners or those that are watching um some thoughts to, okay. to carry on with them and ones i'm thinking of right now are ways to counter multitasking mm -hmm. since you know we gave all the details about why it's really not healthy yeah. so can you give us ways to counter no absolutely um one way that i heavily advocate for is having multiple deadlines for multiple, if you have multiple projects, because I'm a person that I have multiple things I'm working on at once, try not to put your mind on all of these things in necessarily one day or one sitting. Um, dedicate certain time to this project, and then your only atten your, the attention is only being given to this. You know, so that might look like Wednesday after work. Like you get home at five, you give yourself a break from six to eight. You only have attention for this. Mm. The first week, too, you might not be as productive as you might think because it's, you're just putting time into this and it's okay, yeah, where are the ideas and just planning. But after, you know, putting some time into it over and over and over, it becomes a habit. It becomes a habit for us, you know, and, and now the time spent is much more productive, but dedicating time. To specific projects is something I very much advocate for, um, and then it takes the stress off of it. Mm. You know, it takes the resistance to to the feel that I have to get it done at by a certain time. You know, and if it you do have to get it done by a certain time, then maybe it's dedicating more time to that. You know, than other things and prioritizing, and that comes with either having a list so you can prioritize those things. Or, um, one thing I do like to do often is get a paper or I have like a board in my house and I just write out, I just like write out all the things I want to do now. And then from seeing all those things just out 
just on a paper and just get the, okay what is most needed at this point in time mm. because sometimes one seven and ten out of the 20 lead up to getting the rest of them done and i can sit here and worry about step seven i mean step three four and five but if i'm missing step one two and three let me just worry about these first like this is what's most needed at this point in time you know so that takes away a lot of the pressure to feel that you have to get all these done things done all the time because so many things demand us our attention and demand our presence throughout the day yeah so it's very helpful to allocate the time over time or in small increments. Um, another thing that I will leave with is get like accountability partners. You know, that helps quite a lot, quite a lot, because you can't do it all by yourself sometimes. And even if you, you're on a roll, right, something's going to change, your flight's going to hit, we're going to have a fluctuation week or day. Um, and then that way you guys can kind of hold each other accountable, cheer each other on, support each other in times of need. Um, and even if that is, whether that's a friend, whether that's a parent, whether that's somebody you consider a mentor, you know, like you get accountability partners to help, you know, keep you on that track and in that lane that you say you want to be in. That's good. That's yeah. good. Boy, this conversation is so <laughs> deep. <laughs> and I got a lot out of it. So I really hope you guys did right, as well. Right. I want to thank you so much for listening or watching. I am Sean Monet, and this is the Hidden Parts Podcast. I welcome you to follow me on all social media platforms. Instagram at the Hidden Parts Podcast. YouTube, the Hidden Parts Podcast. Facebook, the Hidden Parts Podcast. While you do it, remember to like, subscribe, but more importantly, come back. Oh yeah, you can share it too. <laughs> What's your socials? My socials are for the collective, um, the number four, the collective, on um, that is TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Awesome. Thank you, thank you for having me on again. Thank you for coming. And you gonna come back? Yes, yes. The open door policy. Yes, no, I would love to come back. Just All let right. me know. You just let me know. All right, promise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Hey. <laughs> Till next time. Oh, oh that's this? slick. You gotta put me down with you that. You are cool, so all the socials on here. You gotta put me down. Yeah, no, I got you, I got you. There you are. Thank, thank you thank so you. much. Yay. Thank you. Mm.